Hello and welcome to Living Life. As I was beginning to prepare for today's devotion, I began to examine various articles online. And there was this interesting article that talked about how through tweaking our, our facial muscles by forcefully smiling, we can actually release certain chemicals in our body that actually make us feel happy. In other words, by forcefully smiling and tweaking your face muscles, you can actually discover that your mood begins to shift. And whether whatever situation you're in, whether you're feeling down or depressed or just kind of so-so, if you begin to smile and force it in some ways, your body will begin to respond. And it's just amazing how amazing the body is. But what, what, what all that goes to say is, in today's psalm, the psalm is, talks about uh, uh, reminding his soul to bless the Lord. The psalmist begins by saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul. So today, as we begin to dig into today's passage, let's see how the psalmist reminds himself of God's goodness and how that will change how he walks out his life. Psalm chapter 103, verses 1 through 12. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known His ways to Moses, His deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will He harbor His anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His love for those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. Welcome back to Living Life. As we saw, the psalm begins by saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And it repeats several times. And it's interesting uh, because what does the word bless mean? How do we bless God? Oftentimes when we think about blessing, in the Korean culture, it's oftentimes that uh, during events like the Lunar New Year season, that people would bless one another and we would uh, kneel before the elder generation and then we would bless them and that they would sitting near, uh, bless us back. But it's interesting that we see this form of blessing because the root and the etymology of the word bless comes from the word knee, like your kneecap. And it's basically the implication of kneeling. So oftentimes when we see people praying, they're praying with their hands closed, with their knees bent, uh, sitting down, or on their knees literally before the Lord. And it's really this idea of blessing that comes from recognizing that God is of utmost value, that God is worthy, that God is, um, that He is a person who is, He is due respect and reverence. So this is where the etymology of the word bless comes from. So when the psalmist says, bless the Lord, he's telling his soul to worship God, to recognize God as God, and to kneel and worship Him. So kneeling is an act of submission and recognition that God is God and that simply we are not. And because God is God, He is due respect. The psalmist begins by saying, bless the Lord, and then he continues in verse 2 again by saying, bless the Lord, O my soul. And this time he gives a reason for it. Let's look at it and it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Let us not forget all that God has done for us. Well, let me list them so that we can actually just look at it together. He says that the Lord has forgiven all iniquity, all sin. The Lord has healed all our diseases. The Lord has redeemed our life from the pit. He has crowned us with steadfast love and mercy, and He has satisfied us with good, so that we may be renewed that our youth may be renewed like the eagles. So these are just some of the very, very many ways in which the psalmist is describing how not just he himself perhaps, but all generations of people have experienced 
God's mercy and forgiveness and kindness. So therefore, the psalmist says, let us bless the Lord. And especially, there's a key word here is, let us not forget. Let us not forget. Uh, the psalmist brings it up for a very, very important reason. Because tied up within all the blessing that God has given His people, He gave them a very, very clear commandment. And that is to not forget all that He has done. If we look in Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, verse 12, God says, Take care lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. The psalmist is reflecting on the simple reality that's present throughout all of the Old Testament, which is the people of God must remember His goodness and His faithfulness throughout all generations. And it's very clear what happens when we forget because we see it time and time again in the history of Israel, that the people forget God. They forget all that God has done and instead they turn from loving and worshiping God to loving and worshiping created things, worshiping and other small gods, like other idols. Few books can capture this transition as well as the book of Hosea. In Hosea, God tells the pro his prophet Hosea to go and marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. And uh, uh, because Israel is like a promiscuous woman who has cheated on the Lord God. Israel has turned away from all that God has done and say, God, I don't need you anymore. God, you're not as valuable as the other uh, cultures around me, the other possessions around me, or even the other smaller gods that they worship, like the God of fertility, the God of rain, the God of the sun, etc. So God mentions and God encourages people to keep remembering God's faithfulness because as soon as we turn and forget His faithfulness, we instead turn to other created things to meet our needs. Deuteronomy 6 is very interesting because God says that He will give Israel what they did not earn and what they do not deserve. But He says with this gift, He warns His people, just be faithful. Otherwise, uh, if you're not faithful, there will be consequences consequences for your unfaithfulness. And that is that the anger of God will burn. Anger of God and judgment of God will burn against all sin and on all unfaithfulness. We see throughout this passage that God says, and maybe in like verse 9 is a very good description, He says, He will not always chide or rebuke, nor will He keep His anger forever. In other words, there will be a season when His anger will be poured out against all unrighteousness because God cannot be unrighteous. He cannot accept unrighteousness because it is not in His character. God's character is love, gentleness, righteousness, goodness. And the psalmist says that God cannot walk alongside people or sin, people who sin or sin. And therefore, His judgment will be poured out in His right timing. We see in part that the judgment was poured out against Israel but God also withheld the full ramifications of judgment and He preserved Israel at that time. But we see further that God is on a mission to restore His people, that God is on a mission to bring all people to come and to know Him. And the only way to do it is for some person to receive all the wrath on our behalf because we are the wicked in this world. We are the wicked in Scripture. We are the one who walks away from God and betrays Him and, and uh, turns to other created things instead of worshiping our Creator. And the, re and the way that God solves this ultimate problem of rebellion and this ultimate problem of uh, forgetting the Lord is by sending His Son, Jesus. Jesus is the one who takes on the wrath of God on our behalf, who pays the price on the cross, the price that we could not bear, who receives the judgment that we were due. And therefore, the psalmist is able to say, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, as far as the east is from the west, so does God remove our transgression from us. And He does it by His Son, Jesus, dying on the cross for us that righteous, Jesus' righteousness will become our righteousness and we will trade to Him our unfaithfulness. So today, let's reflect on Jesus 
who paid the price that we could not pay to make us whole with Him. We began this living life by talking about how by forcefully smiling, we can actually influence how we actually feel inside. And similarly, this psalmist begins and says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. The psalmist tells his very soul, his very self to worship God because he recognizes that God is the one uh, who created him. God is the one who is worthy of praise and God is the one who is worthy of worship. So today, I encourage you, uh, if you're feeling like God is distant, that's the best time to run to Him in worship because you may find that by running to God in worship, especially when you feel like you don't, you may discover that God is always there. He's always there waiting for you to come back to Him and come and speak with Him and come and have a relationship with Him. So I encourage you uh, as we continue out throughout this day that you will keep your eyes focused on Him to see and to uh, walk with the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time you dig into your word. We thank you for the psalmist message, which reminds the soul to worship you and to bless you, Lord, and to recognize that you are God. So, Father, I pray that as we walk out today, help us to stay in tune with you, walking with you, and just even in small ways, thinking of you uh, day by day, moment by moment, that we may be really, truly praying without ceasing in small ways throughout the day. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your son. We thank you for the price he paid. Help us to love you more today. And your name we pray, Lord. Amen. This program is a part of the program.